Okay. That's it. Uh, I'm done four minutes. Okay. Sure. We should have a test dog, you know? Oh. Uh, for some of the we were working on the matter. Absolutely. Hi, everyone. My name is Johan Eriksson. Welcome to Brand Blast. Today we're going to talk about communication engines and what that's all about. And um, we're going to do it quite high level, so not get too, too much into detail, but there will be detailed sort of separate sessions for follow-ups. Now, the first principle when it comes to communication that we believe in is that you should start by sort of opening the door for people knocking on the door. Start by talking to the people who want to have a conversation before spending a lot of money stimulating more people to want to have conversations with you and creating interest. So that's the overarching principle. So if we draw that line here and we say on the right side we are capturing people who are interested, we're talking to them, and on the left side of this line we will be talking about how to, how to sort of generate stimulus and how to, to drive interest in your brand. But starting off by, by capturing people who are interested in, in what you want to have a conversation about. And, and finding those people. We believe that a good way to find those people is by using uh, media that delivers on two criteria. One, you can skip them, uh, i.e. not engage with them if you're not interested. And two, if you skip them as an advertiser you don't pay anything because otherwise it won't be long-term sustainable to, to sort of be always on and capture people. So, if um, starting off with finding the right people, here we would add, for example, owned media, hugely important for many companies. So, it can be your website, apps, mobile sites, uh, you know, services that you have that, that exists online, etc all the owned assets that you have because you don't pay anything for them because people can choose to go to your website, they can choose to download app, your app, it qualifies for this column. You also have things such as, um, well, naturally Google and YouTube search. Uh, you would have uh, the new format on YouTube, TrueView, where you can watch for five seconds and then you can skip the ad. Uh, if you don't like it or if you don't feel right now that you want to engage in it and the advertiser doesn't pay until you've seen 30 seconds or more. So YouTube True View would qualify. Um, you would also have engagement ads, i.e. banner ads, where you don't pay anything for the banner to be there, but it's if, if, it's if people choose to engage that you pay. And the principle that ties these types of media together is of course that if people choose to search for, you know, by a TV, they are probably more receptive to communication about TVs than uh, someone who randomly is 32 years old, male, living living in a big city. So um, all of these all of these media sort of captures the people who are really interested. At the second stage, what we want to do is we want to understand uh, what they are looking to do. So we want to primarily understand if they are looking to buy or if they are not yet ready to buy. And what do we do with these two different types of people? Well, if they are ready to buy, probably needless to say almost, but we want to make it as easy and fast as possible for them to buy what they are really looking to buy. And also, of course, you know, look to, to, to sell services around that, what, what they're looking to buy, of course, to drive profitability. But, so we do a big leap from here to buy. So, if they're ready to buy, don't waste the time on, on explaining things further. Help them to buy, fast and simple. If they're not ready, yet ready to buy though, uh, it becomes uh, a bit more sort of challenging because then we want to engage them. We want to enable them to spend time with your brand. Because if they spend time with your brand, they will get to know your brand better. They will drive a higher top of mind awareness of your brand. Your brand will be more likely to be in the consideration set and they will also hopefully develop an emotional connection to your brand which will reduce price sensitivity and which will drive profitability at the end of the day for you. So here, engage. Here we want to serve them different types of content and we want to let them choose what content to engage in. So for example, if we take the, 
the, the thing about televisions, and we play that for, forward. We say, uh, okay, um, are you, for example, interested in the top 10 tips from uh, television experts on what, how, how to decide which TV to buy? And maybe you're interested in that, if you are searching for buying a television. So then that would be a video coming up here that, that, that you can watch. And towards the end of that video, you need to provide them more content and more content and more content because you don't want to be the one saying, stop, this is sort of close enough, you're getting uncomfortably close to my brand. No. I mean, you want to always enable them to consume more content because it builds your brand and it reduces price sensitivity. So after that video, perhaps you you tell them to download an app linked to what you're what you're doing, uh, or you what, enable them to watch another video with, you know, uh, five people who just bought TVs saying what they found interested in interesting in the research process for finding the right TV, for example. So the point here is to always enable people to consume more content because that's good for you and if people want to do it, let them do it. Now, in every piece of content you need to enable them to buy because you will not be able to guess when person A is ready to buy based on how much content they've consumed. Some people will be ready here, some people will be ready here. You don't know that and, and, and the good thing is that you don't have to know because you don't need to guess anymore because all of what we're looking at right now sort of r r removes the guessing name from the equation which is good. So if you include a link to buy in all of these assets then you have a sort of you have a two choice uh, scenario where people either can buy or they can engage further. Buy, engage further and that's good for you. If people come here and they say, well, I'm ready to buy, they go to your buy site, or they enter in store, and for some reason they didn't buy. Then, they, they are probably very valuable to you, because they watched three videos about buying televisions, and so on and so forth, at the end of the day they didn't buy. So then, you include them in remarketing, using all of the tools that you already have in the fine column set out for you, and you sort of continue the journey with them. But what if they bought your competitor and you don't know that they've actually already bought? Well, if that is the case, then they won't search anymore. They won't enter your website. They won't choose to watch uh, the next YouTube trivia video, etc., etc. So you, so it's a self sort of segmenting system, and that's the good thing about it. So just because you once searched for watches, you won't see watches everywhere, which is the perception of many of how bad remarketing is. Now this is a smarter system. If people choose to buy, then you can do a lot more with them. So here comes after sales. And there, there are many things that you can look, look into. Three that I would definitely advise you to look into. One, it's uh, the whole customer relationship management. Making sure that they are satisfied. Follow up on that. Two, enable them to sort of spread what, they, what choice they just made and why they are so happy with, with picking your brand in social media. So this is where Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, everyone comes in that, that have a social profile. And three, uh, basically reassurance advertising. Like if they built a car online, uh, you know, showing them a video uh, next time they enter YouTube that says, hey, did you know that uh, the people who bought this car are more happy than others and their, all their kids go to Harvard and uh, they live happily ever after. And then you feel good about yourself and the likelihood of further advocacy and further spreading of the word will increase. So, um, CRM, social, and reassurance. Reass. So, um, that's, that's the essence of sort of capturing the existing demand and doing something useful with that. Now, if you still have money left, uh, which many of you will, but if you still have money left, and if you still haven't reached your targets, which many, many of you will have as well, then you can add stimulus. Sorry, Mr. Crocodile. And so this is all about traditional media. So here you will have TV, you will have print, and you will have direct mailings, and, and you will have out of home, and so on and so forth. And, well, of course, a lot of digital as well. 
the sort of no, all the non-skippable media, all the media where you pay per impression fits in here, where you sort of force it down people's throats so deep that they cannot breathe, but they start to become interested in your brand. So this is where programmatic comes in, programmatic buying to a big extent on the digital side of things. The important thing here is to always stay on top of the reality of what reality looks like when it comes to consumption of these different media and reflect that in your media plan. If, um, if no, no one is uh, opening direct mailings, well, then it probably doesn't make sense to spend a lot of energy on that media. If no one in your target group is, um, is using uh, uh, you know, internet, then it probably doesn't make sense to spend a lot of money in that, in that bucket. But make sure that you know what reality looks like and reflect that reality. That's very, very important because right now, most companies don't. And right now, most companies start here, and it's very easy to run out of money here. So they don't have any money left for capturing what they create. And then they have smarter competitors who laugh all the way to the bank because they play here, and they capture their demand. So to summarize the essence, start one, capture existing demand. Why run after people strangling them when some are banging on, on your door? Start by doing that. Do it in a smart way via skippable media and we are always giving people the choose choice to, to either buy or engage further. And then add all the stimulus in the world and their mothers so that you create even more interest and demand for your brand. So that's the sort of core skeleton of, of how you can set up an ecosystem. And uh, in separate videos we can dive into details, but this is the essence of what you need to know. So go ahead, get started, play around with your assets, put them out there, what you have. And, and, and start to test and learn, which is always the right strategy. Never wait and see. Thank you from Brand Best. Have fun.